Hi, Bruce, and Lois, and Katie, and and uh, everybody else that's out. There's there's quite a few folks out. And that usually happens when the when the pastor's out. It's, they've got fans too, and that's all right. I'm trying to grow a beard, but it's just I'm I'm just a few steps behind uh, Bruce. So. <laughs> Amen. Well, um, you know, Bruce is Bruce is very kind to give give me a heads up. Uh, gosh, he gave me about a month to prepare. I'm I'm not much of a, a prepare type preacher, but I did as soon as he mentioned mentioned that they would be out, and he he asked if I would preach. I I said, yeah, I. I like to take the opportunity anytime I get an opportunity to uh, say something for Jesus, I'll be glad to. And uh, if it'll help somebody out, then that's what I want to do. Uh, wherever it doesn't matter, wherever, whatever kind of church uh, out in the streets, it makes no difference to me. But, um, I begin to think, you know, what what I would speak on and. It's not really a lot different than what we hear mostly every Thursday night. Um, but in saying that, I, I really would like to just com commend our pastor for this pastor here at this at this little uh, meeting, uh, just for staying with the message of the cross and. Not only, not only the message of the cross, but um, you know, me and Bruce, we've become pretty good buddies over the last few years, and um, I've seen a lot in him that's really helped me a lot in, in in my Christian walk. And one of the things that that I that I notice, and and maybe if you're not a minister, or you've never been in a ministerial setting or have had pastor friends or things as that, you don't see a lot that goes on behind the scenes in the whole politics of church. And let me tell you, church has politics. <clears throat> don't let anybody fool you. It may look like, you know, churches are natural and you walk in, you feel the love, but there's politics behind it all. There's 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 men and women leaders that that set up the government of each little church, you see, to, to perhaps make it that way. There's even politics here. Believe it or not, we have an agenda. Food being one big one. Um, that doesn't just happen, you know. E even, though, even though sister says potluck, that snaps right in your mind. Okay, next week you're going to start thinking of something something to bring. So, uh, in all the politics of things, I've seen Bruce just really stick to the message and, and just stay with it and not get discouraged. Uh, because a Thursday night meeting in a community <clears throat> can tend to be threatening to local churches. And, and it's not. It's not intended to be. This this meeting is actually geared to work with local churches and to to build up the church. Now, if you don't see that, I suggest that you pray and open your eyes. Because it is. This The doors are always open. As far as I know, Bruce hasn't manipulated not one person to come here to stay or to go. Now, I do know that he's... He's been the brunt of, of ridicule. Well, if you don't have dinner, nobody nobody'd show up. You know what he says to that? Well, that may be true. And that probably is the truth. And, um, you know, when you, when you take that kind of an attitude with other ministers or whoever might be giving you what for, um, it really shows others around you that you're letting your guard down. You follow me? It's like, really what they were waiting for was a big 
scriptural comeback, if you will. Not well. Yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> you know, and I and I've I've watched that about Bruce, and there's not a whole lot about about Brother Bruce that that really gets him too excited over things. And knowing that, knowing the the group that he that he's ordained by, the Church of God, they have a lot of religion in that in, in that uh, denomination. A lot of religion. A lot, lots of man taught religion. Um, and to know that a brother who's ordained by that can come out of that and stick with a, a pure message. You know, it may not speak to anybody else, but it speaks to me that, hey, this guy, he's, I believe he's heard from the Lord. There's a lot of messages that a minister could bring to a flock and to a congregation. But week in and week out to stay with the message of the cross and to stay with mercy and to stay with grace. You know, my hat's off uh, to our pastor here. Um, it, it really takes a lot for a minister to stay on the course such as that. It's not. It may appear that he's. It may appear to others that he's uh, lazy in his scripture studies. There may be uh, ministers that say, "Well, he's not studying the scriptures." But I know different because I'm I'm friends with Bruce. He's he studies the scriptures, um, and he gets he gets fed for himself. You know, even of the meteor stuff, but he will bring the message of the cross to to his flock. And saying that, I thought about what I would say to this group here tonight. And a word came to me as I was out jogging one morning, and uh, I was just praying, Lord, you know, what what would I what would I say to I don't want to get off of the message because I preach the message of the cross. I've found liberty in it that, that has just, you know, it's not that you back up or you, you don't go to second base, but the fact is, is you dive in deep into the message of the cross where that is the very source of Christian love. You cannot know love and be apart from the message of the cross. I've seen many things preached in the church. I've seen... I've, we're, as a matter of fact, we're in conference right now on love language. It's a good teaching. But you cannot teach on love languages and it has to do really with man and wife and, and relationships and preparing young people that aren't married for marriage. You cannot teach if you step apart from... Christ and what He did on the cross, you're, you're, you're venturing out there. And I always take opportunity in any setting um, because I really don't care if they threw me out of the church anyways. <laughs> um, when I got saved, there was no man standing there. Say, repeat this prayer. There was none of that. Now, if you were saved that way, I think I don't care how you got saved as long as you got saved. But when I got saved, I found the Bible and I, I schooled myself and there, I'm sure there were a lot of people praying for me. And I met the Lord. So I started out with Jesus and I've just got a strange feeling that I'm going to end this walk with Jesus. And so really, man's opinion... It, 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 doesn't really make any difference. So I take the opportunity at the end of a conference, if the floor is open, if they say anybody have anything to say, and I will always mention what Christ did on Calvary. Now in a setting like this, you might hear it a hundred times. And it, to me, it just sounds sweet every time I hear it. Whether it's a hundred and fifth time. But in a setting where you don't hear Christ and Him crucified for hours on end and you drop it in there, it's like a foot out of joint. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Isn't it strange? 
Because in Christians, I'm talking about Christian churches, we preach from the from the view that it's already fabricated into your makeup. It's already there. You already know it. But the fact of the matter is the Scriptures don't teach that. The Scriptures teach that you believe on it by faith every day. He said, how should we pray, Lord? And part of the Lord's prayers, we call it, He said, pray this way, give us today our daily bread. You see, the children in the wilderness, they were given manna to eat. And there was, a, there was strict laws with, went, went with how they partook of the manna. But one of them was, you don't store up. You don't eat yesterday's manna. God will give you bread for the day. So it, this Christian walk is a daily walk. There's probably nothing that I'm going to speak to you tonight that you haven't heard. But you see, it's not that we know it or we've heard it, but it's, as Peter says, I put you in remembrance. We're human beings. We have to be reminded. Okay? I do anyways. And your spirit, man, has to be reminded. Every day. If we walk in the light of what Christ did on the cross, I promise you, you'll get along a lot better. But when you deviate away from that message, you're going to have trouble. You can bank on it. And I'm not here to gloom and doom you or nothing like that. And as a matter of fact, that's not really what I wanted to talk about. But just around this message, the word that came to me when I was jogging, it's been about three weeks ago, is we preach what we have heard and what we have seen. <clears throat> And so if there's a title of this message, that would be it, because that's the word that, that the Lord dropped into my spirit. That scripture comes from 1 John 1 and 3. And it goes on, and, and I'll just read a little bit of that. Uh, that's not the text. The text I'm going to be reading from is the parable of the unjust uh, debtor, Matthew 18. But I just want to read that out of 1 John. It's a good scripture. I want to talk a little bit about that. I've gave that a lot. I've gave that a lot of thought in my own personal life. That very statement, that that scripture that God spoke to my spirit, I gave it a lot of thought, uh, and I want to talk a little bit about it. John, First John one and three, he says, "That which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us." And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. So John here was pastoring. He was shepherding a flock. At this point in time, John had left the Isle of Patmos. As many of you know, he was exiled to Patmos is where he penned the book of Revelation. Uh, when he left there, he went to a town up north, probably somewhere in Turkey, called Ephesus. And he actually had a Bible college. Apostle John, a small Bible college. And he had lots of people and students. So these letters were going out to them. But this word that came to me that we preach or we declare what we have seen and what we have heard I had to give that a lot, a, a lot of thought as, as a preacher, as one that, that, that preaches His Word to, to His people. Now, in 2005, my life, you know, when God speaks one word to you, it will change your life. If, if you belong to Him. Now, if you're, if you're not saved... And He speaks, you may not hear, you may not know, but when you become born again, He's going to grow us. And when He speaks one word, I mean one, one word. Now this word was kind of like in my spirit, but when He speaks, deep down, and, and you know it's His voice, it changes your life. And it's for the better of the ministry, it's for the edifying 
of the saints. It's for the building up of the church. It's not about me. Many times I hear ministers saying, you know, I just want more. I just want more. I've got to have more. But be careful because God has entrusted you as a minister over His people. In 2005, I stood on a platform uh, first time that I, I went on a mission trip to Honduras. And it was really amazing. I looked out, you know, over a sea of, of, of the local Honduran people, hands raised up, worshiping God, dancing. I mean, they had some serious... They had a horn section going and dancers out front. I mean, they get into it. It's really amazing to see. Lots of fun. You just want to go out there and run the soccer fields. I did it and I couldn't walk the next day. But I stood up on the platform and and just looked out. And, and as, as a music minister at, at my church, um, God spoke to me and He said, those are my people. That's all he said. And I didn't have to say why or what or what are you talking about, God? But as a minister, I you know, I I just said in my spirit, forgive me, Lord. I'm guilty as the next minister out there to to step on people and use people's situations that I know and sling it from the pulpit and Barris and and just mistreat God's people and when he spoke that or and, and and my line of work as a music minister everybody get up everybody jump everybody clap everybody hey everybody ho you know and doing all that and I did that for years because I'd get discouraged and come in a church setting and everybody just be sitting there you know and and here I am working and laboring and toiling you know, and, and I've lost the joy of doing my job to, to worship. I started out worshiping Jesus, not in a church. I had a guitar and, and uh, you know, I just sing to the Lord. You know, why does it have to be any different when you're 20 years into this thing? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't. But there has to be, there has to be a relationship. There has to be a renewal and your mind, especially as a minister, uh, with the Lord. You have, to, you have to feed from His Word and you have to hear His voice so you can grow. And when He spoke that to me, I knew that that day that, that my ministry would, would never be the same. And, uh, you know, and that's... And really, when I when I met the the Weeks family and and the Tuttles, um, they're just a precious family. You know, I met them on a Saturday night on on the Heather night. You know? <laughs> and they and they were out they were out doing what they do up here up there. You know, and uh, and we just uh, came to really like one another and and to see them just be real. With people, and to see how I watch how uh, I watch how the people are treated here, and as far as I know, you all are treated with respect. Um, Bruce and, and Lois, they don't look higher up to anybody or down on anybody. Everybody that walks in that door is treated with kindness and respect. And uh, that's if not somebody. Let me know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she'll get you. Yeah, I like to talk to. <laughs> but and, and you know, and that's how it should be, because um, we're all in this thing together. And you know, and so when I heard this word, we preach what we have seen and heard. And I think about how many times have I ever preached a message of. You know, you're going to reap what you sow. And that's the truth. That's Bible. But is it necessary that I spend your precious time for an hour or two telling why you're going to reap what you sow? No, you don't need me to do that. You know that. 
You know, and and the Holy Ghost, and I and I've and I've got this, and I've got that from other ministers this week and and weeks past. We 